For the first time, Tesla has revealed the details of its Roadrunner battery production plans near the Fremont factory, and I'm going to show you what it indicates when what it shows about our electric car maker. Tesla has applied for CD government approval to build a battery production facility under the file name Project Roadrunner. Based on the documents submitted to the city government, Tesla wants to renovate and expand Tesla's Cato Road facility in Fremont, California that houses the Roadrunner project. The renovation and expansion will make room for battery manufacturing equipment and research and development space. Tesla Fremont Factory's Roadrunner project indicates that the electric car maker has solved the battery bottleneck issue. Welcome back, dear friends. This is Armin Harya from tortnews.com. If you are here for the first time, please subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell. This is a developing story. If you would like to know more about the Tesla's Roadrunner project and Tesla's battery production plans, Tesla has acknowledged the Roadrunner project publicly for the first time and revealed more details about the status of battery production in Fremont. Earlier this year, if you remember, Electric has exclusively revealed Tesla's secret Roadrunner project, which consists of its in-house designed battery cell manufacturing system to increase production volume and reduce cost. Now, Tesla has acknowledged the project as they are seeking approval to build a second floor at their Terra battery manufacturing facility hosting the Roadrunner project in Fremont. Terra battery manufacturing facility was a quote from that project, uh, from the government's that, uh, application. They wrote in an application with the city of Fremont uh, filed last quarter, and uh, the, this is what it says. The, to accommodate new battery manufacturing equipment and R&D space known as Roadrunner. The project proposes to construct an additional floor area of approximately 21,485 square feet at the second floor covering a portion of the central space that is open to the second floor uh, roof and to add an additional smaller approximately 8,260 square foot third floor above. These improvements will increase the total floor space of the existing Cato building by approximately 29,745 square feet to a total of 156,057 square feet, but will not change the footprint of the building or its exterior facades. No grading or excavation is necessary for these improvements and nearly all construction work will be conducted internally within the existing building. The project will also add a number of rooftop mechanical equipments, examples, air handlers, HVAC system and fans that support the new battery manufacturing operations. Once this internal floor space is constructed, Tesla will move in the new equipment that supports the expanded battery manufacturing and R&D operation. This is the end of the quote from Tesla's application to the city. Now, the facility is located down the road from the Fremont factory at the in intersection of Cato Road and Page Avenue. Tesla doesn't elaborate on the volume output of the battery manufacturing system, but it is expected to be somewhat significant considering it plans to operate the production line 24 seven with four shifts of up to 100 workers. Tesla wrote in the application the following saying, quote, the remaining 400 employees will work in shifts such that there are 100 employees working at manufacturing and production operations at any given time, all day, every day. Shifts change at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. daily. The shifts operate such that 100 employees work day shifts in the first half of the week, 100 employees work night shifts for the first half of the week, 100 employees work day shifts during the second half of the week, and 100 employees work night shifts during the second half of the week. 
End of the quote. Furthermore, as part of the project, Tesla is asking for a significant increase in power capacity at the location. Here is a quote from the Tesla's application. Under the proposed project, operational electrical consumption is projected to increase to nearly 92,800 megawatt hour per year or an increase of approximately 72,800 megawatt hour per year. The existing electrical demands of the Terra battery manufacturing operations and R&D functions with both buildings will continue. The increased electrical consumption is attributable to the electrical energy demands of the new technology battery manufacturing equipment, Roadrunner. This equipment is assumed to operate 24 hours per day for 365 days per week. This was the end of the quote. Tesla is also disclosing several toxic materials that will be used as part of the project. Here is part of the list. Aluminum, cobalt, lithium, nickel, oxide. So if you notice, cobalt is there. So the batteries that will be used in, uh, in this K, uh, Kado Road, uh, Roadrunner project, battery facility, uh, is not go are not going to be cobalt-free batteries, which we have been talking about in the past, which apparently Cadel, the Chinese battery giant company, has already achieved. So Tesla is still going to use aluminum, cobalt, lithium, nickel, oxide, titanium butoxide, lithium nickel man manganese cobalt oxide, cobalt sulfate, lithium hydroxide monohydrate, manganese sulfate, nickel sulfate, precursor NCA oxide or NCA oxide. As you can see, those are all materials used in battery cell production. Tesla plans to allow tours of the new facility at its battery day, which is now tentatively planned for September 15 with the Investor Shareholder Day. In short, Tesla is currently expanding battery cell production operations at the facility, and I think this is a significant ex expansion because so many workers mentioned above will be working there 24-7 with uh, shifts. I think this would still qualify to be under their research and development effort because building is not that huge to, to amount to a gigafactory. Tesla is mainly using the location to test the new cell manufacturing equipment that they are designing and building, but I think it could still result in a significant production capacity, at least in the five figures in the kilowatt hour and maybe getting close to six figures. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section below. Do you think this, this is going to be a huge operation or just a big size test operations for Tesla? In my previous reports, I was thinking and expecting only a pilot manufacturing plant in Fremont. Um, not real mass production. Well, now this seems to suggest that Tesla actually wants to manufacture terawatt hours of cells in Fremont or actually just outside of Fremont. But will it? Will Tesla do it? This may be a little confusing. Let me, let me try to clarify a little bit. Here is the only portion of the application that uses the word Terra. The Cato building is a two-story 126,312 square foot building with a first floor footprint of 96,976 square feet. Within the first floor area, the existing battery manufacturing and research and development facilities known as Terra occupy the western portion of the floor. And if you remember, there was another place also that uh, Tesla referred as Terra battery manufacturing. That may be the source of confusion. I don't believe they will be attempting to produce terawatts of energy storage per year on the upper floor of small factory. Is that enough space to produce terawatt hours of energy, terawatt of energy storage per year? I don't know. If any one of you know, knows more about batteries and about electricity in details, um, let us know about this capacity and what you think, friends. In many ways, Tesla would be unwise not to expand production in Fremont as much as humanly possible. 
they they make over 400 kilo uh, kilowatt per employee actually they make over four hundred thousand dollars per employee in revenues and with the trucks coming they will need every battery they can get plus having a facility in fremont producing full-time would shorten the travel distance for batteries in california manufacturing which if they can make enough they can probably fulfill most of california production needs greatly simplifying battery logistics for california and making a model they can copy around the world for other factories especially i assume that in california the trucking is huge and a lot of trucks will be shipped in that area and this will cut the battery transformation um, uh, distance therefore the logistics and the cost associated with with the logistics but it still doesn't quite add up panasonic keeps making the 2170 cells for model 3 and model y in nevada right and those are the two high volume cars being built in fremont so we pretty much know that the new cells aren't destined for model 3 and tesla model y electric crossover and i don't think anybody expects the semi or the cyber truck to be built in fremont uh, not enough space probably a new factory in texas that only leaves us with model s and model x at least for now that i could see how that i could see happening because they are both overdue for a technological upgrade especially to their battery tech and the model s and model x production volume is low enough that tesla may be able to make the batteries for them in this new facility in fremont at cato road uh, with the roadrunner uh, battery um, manufacturing process uh, pro program well friends let me know what you think about this development what would the, the these batteries where these batteries will be used where tesla may build the semi truck will these batteries be used for the semi truck or a new upgraded model s and model x uh, in the meantime this is armin harian from torpnews.com uh, please subscribe to our channel this is a developing story i'm going to bring more reports on uh, tesla's battery manufacturing roadrunner project at the kado road building and um, I'll, I'll see you in our next report i have something very interesting about the cyber truck coming up because you know it has been featured at the uh, peterson museum um, our friends found something very interesting while looking at the cyber truck so look for my next report about cyber truck okay friends have a great rest of the day wherever you may be and i'll see you in the next report god bless you take good care of each other and stay safe